take one man who knew but one fear, put him in the vortex of his own nightmares. That's the story of Lighthouse 12, taken this week from the files of John Steele, adventurer. Hello, friends. This is John Steele. If you like yarns with a briny flavor, this week's tale will be right up your alley. It's a chapter from the life of a young friend of mine I grew to know quite well, shortly after he'd been discharged from the Navy. I know he's anxious to tell you this story because he feels, as I do, that was a period in his life which showed him the importance of looking a problem squarely in the face. I first met Peter Rawlings when I was running a supply cutter for the Coast Guard along Portland Bluff. And, uh, but, uh, let's have Peter tell you about it himself. Pete? I guess plenty of guys came out of the war with uneasy thoughts that seemed too unimportant to talk about. Things a man just tries to work out by himself, that's the way I felt. Would have embarrassed me to make a big thing of it. My application for the lighthouse course at Coast Guard School came through right before I got out of the hospital, and I figured this is all blow over as soon as I got on a new job. Night doesn't last forever, it's the way I saw it. Jan had been writing, asking me when she could come see me, but I kept putting her off till I had this thing all squared away. Not that she wouldn't have understood, Jan's a bright girl, but being a woman, she'd have worried. But when she came up to school the day I finished the course, it didn't take much convincing on her part about getting married right away. My orders had come in and there was nothing holding us back, so we got married at noon and took off right away for Lighthouse 12. The inlet was smooth as a baby's chin. Pete, I see it. Hmm? Where? Look, over there. I don't... Oh, yeah. Well, can't we go faster? What's your hurry? Aren't you anxious to see it? Well, sure. Well, come on, then. Make the spray fly. Okay. Mm, love that on my face. You think they give us a man-sized boat instead of this? What? Nothing, dear. Pete, hey, come on. You're slowing down again. Now, we're almost there. Well, let's step on it. Right. Hold on. Sure are. There's a lighthouse. Wait a minute, I can't hear you. Well, here we are, honey. Uh, now, throw me that line, will you? This one? That's a girl. Good. All right, now watch it. It's slippery. Oh, darling, look at it. Yeah. You like it? Yes. It's so by itself. Independent, sort of. Mm-hmm. I mean, standing out here so far from everything. Yeah. It's different what I thought. Mm -hmm. Disappointed? Oh, no, it's lovely. So why you then? Independent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not acting like a female at all. What? It's your new home, Mrs. Rawlings. Don't you want to see the inside? I'll be, be you inside. Hey, hey, now, wait. Well, catch me. Think I can't, huh? <laughs> Trying to run home to mother already. Right. Pete, let go. Now, who's master of this family? Honey, you're back. Put me down. Oh, no. Got to carry my bride over the threshold. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, this is it. Cute. Cute, she said. Come here a minute. Where? In here. What? Look, right next to the bed. Hmm? I don't see anything. A bay window. Pete, it's enormous. Yeah, it's big, all right. It'll be like sleeping in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. It's really swell, honey. We'll see the water first thing in the morning and last Sure, night. it's fine. Oh, now I'll show you something. <laughs> Can't be better than this. The beacon. Come oh, on. sure, I've never seen one close, too. Let's see, now the stairs should be around here. Yeah. Here they are. Oh, they furnished parachutes coming down. Uh, almost there. Oh, it's me. Mmm, yes. You like it? It's really something. Bother you being up so high? No, except for the water, of course. What about the water? It's so far away, you can't even hear it up here. Hmm. You happy, Princess? Mm, I approve of honeymoons. Not much of a honeymoon stuck way out here. It's ideal. Just you and me and the ocean. Yeah, I guess you're right. The weather was fine and calm those first couple weeks. 
Even got so I could enjoy watching the sun chase itself over the quiet little waves rainbowing up around our tiny island. The few ships passing our area hardly caused any swell. Peaceful. And we were happy as a Christmas tree. Jan puttering around, planting things and fixing up the place. Me learning the tricks of the new beacon, doing odd jobs. The job actually ran itself. At first, I kept the ship to show a transmitter open all day for weather reports, but gradually I got so I just listened in on the regular scheduled dispatches. United States Coast Guard weather forecast, 12 a.m., yeah. temperature 50 degrees. Why, what's up? Humidity 64. Visitors, Barometer say. Three, okay. Who is it? Don't know. Come on down to the dock. Heading this way, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to be. I wonder who. What's the date? The first? Yeah, it's around that. Why? That's it, then. Supply cutter. Oh, sure. Ahoy! Lighthouse! Hello there! Bring any sugar? 40 pounds! Throw your line! Okay. Thanks. I'm John Steele. Be bringing you supplies every month. Oh, Peter Rawlings, my wife, Jan. Glad to know you. You're just in time for lunch. Well, look now, I see. Oh, there's Lowe's. I'll get it ready while you two unload. Uh, she's the boss, you know, Mr. Steele. <laughs> Don't let him get away, Pete. He's going to mash the potatoes. Oh, now I know you're staying. That's usually my job. <laughs> oh, here, let's get this stuff off. This your first lighthouse? Yeah. What do you think of it? Oh, it's okay. Not exactly what I'd expected. Why? What did you expect? Oh, I don't know. More storms, for one thing. <laughs> You've only been here a few weeks. Why? This inlet's known for its heavy weather. Mm, is, huh? Just give it time, son. You'll get your fill of storms soon enough. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Ah, that does it. Where do you want the new outboard put? Pete. Huh? What? Outboard. You want it left? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just leave it here on the dock. Say, uh... To steal those uh, storms you mentioned. How soon? Well, let's see. Uh, this is November. Should be setting in pretty soon now. Big breakers, huh? You bet. Biggest I've ever seen. Well, I remember one night I had a 40 degree roll over by the bluff over there. Uh -huh. Well, uh, uh, we better not keep Jan waiting. No, no, better not. Uh, come on, I'll toss you for the potato masher. <laughs> out here tonight. Yeah, it's quite a moon. Wish Mr. Steele could have stayed longer today. He's nice. Mm -hmm. Well, he has other stops. I know. Mm, love the sound of the breakers on the rocks. Yeah. Bet it's good swimming. Honey, let's. Hmm? What? Go swimming. It's swell at night. Oh, you go ahead. I, I don't Oh, it's like... no fun alone. What do you say? Well... Gee, November's pretty late. Oh, you're a sissy. Oh, no, I just don't Please. think we should. Jan, it doesn't look safe. You're scared to get your little feet wet? I'm not scared. Well, of course you're not. I just don't like it, that's all. It's okay. Mountain out of a molehill. Forget it. No, oh, look, baby. If you really want It's wanna... not that important. Yes, it is important. Pete, I really don't. We're going in. Get your suit. But I... Come on. We're going in the water. Uh, I'll be right there. Hurry up, it looks marvelous. I'm coming. Want to dive from here? Uh, it looks pretty jagged. No, it's perfectly all right from this ledge. Well, say, don't you think the dock is a lot oh, safe? The dock's no fun, it's too calm. Uh, you, you know, I was thinking maybe we ought to wait. What for? Well, if this wind keeps up, it might rain. And... That little wind isn't anything, the moon's still out. Yeah, well... <laughs> Honey, stop shivering, it's not cold. Who's shivering? Well, you ready? Okay, um... You go first. All right. Here goes. Oh, it's wonderful. Come on in. Yeah. Looks good. You don't know what you're missing. Aren't you coming in? Yeah, sure. I uh, think I'll grab a quick smoke first. Well, hurry up or I'll push you in. Oh, out already? 
See, I told you it's too cold. <sighs> Not too cold, you big sissy. I've come to get you. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going to go in. Here, let's dive in together, holding hands. Oh, now, look, I don't need to... Oh, be... no, it's fun. Come on, take hands. It's crazy. It might be dangerous. Oh, here, give me your hand. I, uh... Come on, try it. Jan, I don't think... Here, here, there... Hey, let go, will you? Now, when I count three... No, Jan, I'd really rather... One, two... Wait, now. Three! Oh! Jan, I... Isn't it wonderful? Jan. We should have thought of this before. I... I have to get out. Where are you going? I'm... It's cold. Swim around a little. You won't notice. No, no, I, I've had enough. I've got to... I'm getting out. No, you don't. And I don't. So you'd get away, huh? No, don't. Please. You're running home to mother, huh? Jan, let go. Now stop. he's out of this family. Jan, stop it. Jan, let go. You think I can, huh? You think I let can. Let go. Will you stop it? Stop it. <laughs> Jan didn't speak to me all the next day, and I didn't blame her. A couple of times I tried to get up the courage to tell her what the score was, but when I'd start to say it, I'd see the red cut my ring had made on her cheek, and the words stuck like cotton in my throat. I was pretty miserable, and I knew life didn't look so rosy to her either. If she just yelled at me or gotten mad, but she didn't say a word. I'd hit her, and she couldn't figure out why. At the dinner, I made up my mind she had to know. Need any help? No, thanks. A lot of dishes for one small girl. Got a clean towel? You don't have to. I don't mind, Brian. You got the rough part. <laughs> no dishpan hands for Peter. Want me to wipe the soap off your ear? It doesn't bother me, thank you. It's becoming. What? Soap on your ear. Jan, finish that later, will you? Pete, don't keep... Please, there's something. I want to talk to you. Won't you sit down just a minute? It's important. Well? I want you to know about last night. Is there anything to know? Honey, it wasn't you I slapped. That's interesting. Oh, no, what I mean is it was, it was what you were trying to make me do. It still doesn't make sense. Wait, wait, wait. You see, this goes way back. I've never talked much about the torpedoing. Isn't this the wrong time for sympathy? I'm not asking for sympathy, Jan. I guess what happened to me happened to lots of guys who saw submarine combat. At least that's what I keep telling myself. I don't know if it had been sneaking up on me or if it was the torpedoing that did it. See, I wasn't hurt when we were hit, not then. Maybe if I'd got knocked out right off, I, I wouldn't be like this. Like what? I was aft that day working on the screw shaft. I knew something had happened, but I didn't know what till the emergency whistle went off. I started for central control fast, then just as I reached the forward hatch ladder, a noise behind me made me spin around. Go on. The side seam was ripping wide open, slow-like, like a crazy, laughing mouth. Heavy sea was plunging in at me, around me, over me. I scrambled for the ladder, but the water was too fast for me. It kept dragging me back. I got hold of the top rung, finally, and held on. My fingers were numb from the cold water and the strain. The waves were throwing my legs around like old newspapers. I tried to haul myself up by my hands, reach up to the hatch, but the pull of the water was too strong. It splashed over my face, and I began to choke. and couldn't get my breath. My head was as far back as it'd go, but with my legs beating around like that, it kept drawing me under. Oh, Pete. Must have been about then my legs got broken. Not that I felt any pain. Sort of went out of my head, I guess, before I conked out. You're afraid of the water. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. That's a funny thing, though. I didn't realize it until I came to in the hospital. Days there weren't so bad, but every night, those first six months, I was in traction. Foaming mountains of ocean exploded over my bed, left me yelling and sweaty. You don't have nightmares now. No, no, the nightmares went away. The water still bothers you. Yeah. Wish I'd known. Oh, honey, I didn't tell anybody, especially Dad. See, the men in our family have always been you know, seafaring. I just had to get over it, so. I see. I never got A's in psychology, but... I knew the best thing for me to do was to get right back on the horse that had thrown me and make it gallop. Head for the sea. Yeah. Only this was all I could get. The plate in your back. That and the discharge that read, no active duty. You must have hated me last night. If you just I told just, me. I didn't think I'd have to. I thought I'd go away. Like the guy had the bed next to me in sick bay. What about him? He was much worse off than I was. But he kept the faded old concertina next to his bunk. And when the pain got too much for him, he'd take it out in the squeeze box, hoping it'd stop. But out here, Pete, so far from everything, maybe no, we should... No, no, no. You see, honey, I'm counting on it to... 
fix me up. Well, that's better. Pete. Huh? What time is it? Uh, it's about three, I think. Three? What are you doing? I was, uh, I I'm closing the window, dear. We should have air. Well, it's... I'm, I'm cold. Oh. Jan, I... If you really want... No. I, I guess it is getting a little chilly. Yeah. Windy out there, isn't it? Yeah. The nights will be like this all winter, darling. All winter. Don't look at it, Pete. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Hadn't you better get back to... Oh, go to sleep. Will you go to sleep? <laughs> It's in the hall closet. Why? Well, the end pole under the dock needs... Well, it's pretty shaky. Well, but it's I... not your job. Oh, I like banging. I'll do it. But, honey, I don't mind. It's not your job. But won't it bother you, no, too? Of course not. Well, Don't I just you... thought... I'll fix it. I tell you I will. Darling, that pole's going to collapse any day now. I'm going to do it, Jan. Don't worry well, about it. Well, maybe if we did it together. No. Well, I was just thinking, you could hold it in place with the dock, and I could... No, I can do it. But, Pete, you've been saying that... I'll like... fix it. Well, it better be done soon, darling. I'll fix it. Now, let me alone, will you? I'll fix it. Next week, sure. <laughs> Back to bed, Jan. Come back downstairs, please. Leave me alone, can't you? Well, I hate to think I'm of... I'm okay. But, darling, the tower's so drastic. I'm all right, I tell you. You can't keep on without sleep like this, dear. You'll be sick. Leave me alone, do you hear? Leave me alone. <laughs> How come the fancy fixings? Hey, it's a party. Why not? It's our third month anniversary. Well, how about that? Old married folks. Even old married folks have parties once in a while. <laughs> you bet they do. Uh, do we dress for dinner, Lady Janet? Oh, quite. Your clean dungarees are laid out, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to light the candles? Yeah, everything's ready. All right. What are we having? Oh, it's a surprise. Oh, I'm going to look. I'll have your ears if you do. I spent all day at this party. <laughs> I wonder why Mr. Steele didn't come Coast today. Guard, oh, I forgot States to tell Coast you, he's Guard. bringing the stuff tonight. Oh, he can Coast help us celebrate. Yeah, I spoke United to him this morning. He had come engine in, trouble please. or something. You can't get music on the ship to shore, honey. Uh, just a minute. LH-12, give us the weather, will you, fella? Please, please don't. Just take a minute. Latest official weather report. Increasing wind with rain, barometer low and falling rapidly. Wind south to southeast. Keep your rubbers on, Rawling. Thanks, I, uh, I'll do that. LH-12, out. Well, it's on the table, what do you say? Very nice, honey. Nice? Why, Peter Rawlings, after It's slow, I... baby. Uh, uh, wait just a minute. Huh? I'll be right back. Pete. I think maybe I ought to check the beacon. You know the beacon's all right. Well, you, you can't ever tell. If you leave me tonight... Honey, this will just take a minute. Will it? Just a minute. You better be right back. She knew I wouldn't come back. I'd done this too many times before. But a storm was coming, and there was that same hollow sickness in me, a need to get as far as I could from the snarling breakers spuming up outside the windows downstairs. I stood with my back pressed against the circular glass of the tower and looking straight ahead and never down. I thought of Jan and her party waiting for me, but I couldn't move. I just stood there tense, afraid to go down closer to the sight and sound of that twisting water. I heard Steele's boat faintly through a lull in the wind. John Steele. He'd have to take me back with him this time. I don't know you're kidding myself anymore. I've been on this horse now for three months, but I couldn't make it go. And then I knew I couldn't even get to the mainland. I couldn't even face the trip across. I don't know how long I stood there before I realized it was quiet outside. The wind had let up, but the sky was still a heavy gray. Gray. I'd been in the tower all night. Steele's boat was gone from the dock. And then I remembered Jan's party. Jan! Coast Guard calling, Coast Guard calling. Honey, LH hey, where are you? LH-12. That's still made up. LH-12, come in, over. Jan! Answer me, Jan! Coast Guard calling, Coast Jan. Guard calling. Jan, answer me! LH-12. Jan! Are you getting me, calling LH-12? Jan! Are you getting me, calling LH-12? Come in, please, LH-12. LH-12, come in. 
Your man? LH-12, the Coast Guard. Over. Where you been, man? Things happening upstairs. Low barometer dropping fast, 29, 25 already, went southeast. Looks rough. Keep your eyes on zip. Rough? Sure, uh, will do. Nail your head on, Buster. We got a hurricane on our hands. You getting me, LH-12? You getting me? I said there's a hurricane. Yeah, I got you. How is it? Moving fast? Like an antelope, already up to 80 an hour, down the coast, picking up across the Connecticut Valley. Your beacon in good order, Rolling? Yeah, it's okay. Is that all? Yeah, for now. Better keep in touch, though. The door banged open. The wind rushed in like a hungry demon. I put all my weight against it. The lock had broken. It wouldn't catch. I didn't have to look in the bedroom to know the big window had broken loose, too. The whole place was alive. Curtains ballooned against the ceiling. Lamps lay like uprooted trees. I tried to push the couch against the door, but the wind was too strong now. The angry water was volcanoing up outside breakers 15 feet high. My shirt was ripped and the wind was cold on my back. LH-12. Coast Guard LH-12 calling LH-12. Come in, Rollin. LH-12. Coast Guard calling. I knew I shouldn't go to the tower, but I couldn't stop. I just raced on up. My footsteps echoed mechanically in the narrow stairwell. Five downstairs had left me winded. I was only halfway up when I had to stop, catch my breath. I could see better now. Close to the beacon. Yeah, there it was, turning. Slow and sure. Good old faithful. Dependable. I stood there one foot ready on the next step up. Come in, urgent. Come in, urgent. Dependable. Come in, light on 12. Coast Guard calling. LH-12, come in, LH-12, urgent. Come in, Lighthouse 12, Coast Guard calling. LH-12 to Coast Guard, over. Rollins, this is urgent, SOS from the supply center. Yeah. He's out in that mess, Steve. Steve's help quick. You can reach him faster than we can, over. My boat, it's pretty small. Can't you do better with a lifeboat there? All boats out on other jobs. I can't. Look, fella, I didn't want to tell you, but your wife's on that cutter. Jan, Janet. Rollins, I said your wife. Where? What direction? Don't know now. Wind like this. Steel's radio went cold about ten minutes ago. Better get on your horse, boy. Yeah. On my horse. The little boat was jigging up and down so hard I could hardly grab the mooring line. Big comas crashed around me, beating at my face. The line stretched hard as steel wire. I tugged at the knot, but I couldn't get it loose. I couldn't waste any more time. Jan was out there somewhere. I slashed the stiff rope with my knife. Salt water stung my hand where the knife had slipped, but I kept hacking at it till it gave way. I barely had time to jump in the boat before it was tossed out into the breakers. I crawled back to the stern, found the starting cord, wound it on, and yanked. The sky was black as night. I'd lost my direction bending over the motor, and then the beacon swept slowly around, and I was headed straight for the reef. The rock shelf gleamed up sharply through the turning light path. I tugged at the tiller, but the boat heaved forward with the great bursting swells. I could hardly see through the panic that gripped me. The light passed on, blotting out the reef, but I could still hear it coming closer. The surf getting louder against the rocks. It was sucking me backward in long, powerful sweeps. Suddenly, we seemed to stand still, poised in midair. Then a tower of water scooped us up and threw us outward away from the jagged rock. And I headed for open water again. I lost all sense of time, just kept going. Pictures streaked through my mind, Jan clinging to an upturned boat. Jan choking and gasping for breath. I shouted her name into that wild blackness that the wind muffled the words and threw them back in my face. But I kept yelling into the storm. The waves seemed fiercer than ever now, but I had to keep going. Find Jan, had to find Jan. And then the motor stopped. My hands were stiff with salt and cold, but I managed to wind the starting cord. It wouldn't move. I grabbed it with both hands, but the thing was jammed. I lay on my stomach over the stern. The water washed over me into my mouth and eyes. I tugged at the motor, trying to lift it up, but the water held it. A piece of screening was caught in the propeller, but it was too far down to reach from there. I'd have to get under the boat to free it, go down into the water. I crouched against the gunwale, trembling. She was broadside now, rocking hard, shipping more and more water by the second. I couldn't go down, not into the water. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it now, Jan. Right now! I can't see. The water is so strong. If I could do... Free! Ah, it slipped. It's gone. All right, I'm... Go under again, Jack. Got it? I got it. Ah. Ah. 
I'm getting the... straining through the storm, but I didn't find them. And then the hurricane suddenly shifted out to open sea and the sun came out. The wind was gone and the loud, ugly waves that had run amuck were gentle ripples lapping quietly against the side of the boat. A seagull floated by. I stood up and looked across the new bright inlet. I'd have seen them now in that flat calmness. There was no sign of life anywhere. I nosed into the dock and tied up. The door of the lighthouse was still open the way I'd left it. Broken lock jutting out. I stood there on the dock, dreading to go up to the house. A house without Jan. And then a figure tore around the side of the building and Jan was there crying in my arms. Oh, Pete, oh, darling. Oh, hey, I thought you were... Now, hey, now, stop that. Let her cry, Pete. She's been wanting to all night. I haven't... <clears throat> Had me fooled. Well, when the lifeboat dropped us off, then you were... Lifeboat? But one of the boats came by from down the coast soon after my engine broke down. Then when we got here, I thought sure you'd been washed over the ledge. Well, I was looking for you. Out there in the hurricane? Well, I had to find you. We couldn't believe, uh... Well, that is, uh, we, we thought... I know. I know. Darling, about last night, I didn't want to go. I understand, honey. Sort of a last straw, huh? I guess it was, but... You're back now, though. Right? For keeps. <clears throat> well, I uh, guess I'd better call in for a boat. No, don't bother, Mr. Steele. We'll run you over. Might be pretty choppy on the way back tonight. <laughs> well, you know, that's mighty thoughtful of you, Mr. Steele. Uh, honey, uh, I'd better get our oil skins. <laughs> <laughs> Title, Lighthouse 12, a story of a man who learned to overcome a demon of his own creation. Well, if you like this story, why not visit with me next week? Because I have a man I'm sure you'd like meeting who found himself in a net of political intrigue in the Near East with a mysterious and beautiful woman. I like to call it the mission. So, friends, until next week, this is John Steele saying, a life of adventure is yours for the taking, wherever you find it. Only don't look for it. It may find you. Well, goodbye and good hunting. John Steele Adventurers, produced by Robert Monroe, directed by Elliot Drake, and written by Lois Landauer. In our cast were John Larkin, Eva Marie Saint, and Charlie Holmes. Don Douglas is featured as John Steele. The orchestra was conducted by Sylvan Levin. Remember, next week, Mutual presents The Mission, another story of suspense and action from the files of John Steele Adventurer. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.